everybody, it's Liz of Consumed by Books, and this is what I've gotten in my mailbox lately. Uh, this is my first vlog of 2012, so Happy New Year. Yes, I cut all of my hair off, and I'm very happy with it. While the hairstylist was blow drying it, there was a moment where I was afraid that it was going to look like Justin Bieber, but I think it's short enough that I've avoided that territory. But you're not here to hear me sing or talk about my hair, so let's get straight into the books, because this is a big one. I got a lot of review books because over Christmas break I actually started to tackle my blog inbox and I caught up on some review requests. So let me show you what I've got. So I have two titles to show you from Little Brown. We have The Queen of Kentucky by Alicia Whitaker and this is about a farm girl who kind of wants to fit in with the popular country club crowd. I don't know a ton about it but it's been getting a lot of great reviews and it looks like a fun contemporary read, so I'm very much looking forward to reading it. The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. This is a contemporary romance novel, and I've been looking forward to it to, I've been looking forward to it for months, so I will definitely be picking this one up soon. Yeah, it just looks really wonderful, and I love this cover. So cute. From Random House, I have a copy of Madame Tussaud by Michelle Morin. This is a historical novel about the French Revolution. Michelle Morin is also the author of Cleopatra's Daughter, and the publisher is interested in marketing this one to a more YA audience, so I'm looking forward to reading this one and sharing my thoughts on it with you all. From First Second, I got a copy of Friends with Boys, which is by Faith Erin Hicks. If you remember seeing my top 10 books of 2012 that I'm most excited to read. This was on it. The same publisher that publishes this for a second also put out Anya's Ghost by Vera Broskel, which I was a very big fan of. And this one looks like it has kind of a similar style and it just sounds very, very wonderful. It is about a girl who has been homeschooled but is starting high school, except she is haunted. Sounds a little bit like Mean Girls, but as far as I know, no one in Mean Girls is haunted. I'm going to show you guys a couple of gifts that I got. I got Pedro! Jeez! What are you doing here? You scared me. Sorry. Sorry. These things happen. This is Pedro. Christmas gift for my brother. I had a dream before Christmas that my brother got me a two-foot-tall stuffed penguin. And then I emailed him about it, and he actually decided to get me a very large penguin. So this is Pedro. Look at that little curve to his beak. I like to think of him as Pedro the Pretentious Penguin. Yeah, you're stuck up, aren't you? I use him as decor, actually, more than anything else. He just kind of sits in my living room and watches over things. You know, keeps an eye on the place when I'm not there. Okay, Pedro. Um, I kind of got to finish filming this vlog, so, yeah. The next book I have to show you is A Christmas Gift which I Got From My Cousin, and that is... The Tourmaline by Paul Park. I hope I pronounced that title correctly. I really don't know much about this one. I haven't really heard anything about it before getting it, but it looks like an interesting urban fantasy type of read. So I'm looking forward to picking it up and just learning more about it. And lastly, I did buy several items over the past couple of weeks. Zombie Tag by Hannah Moskowitz. I read Invincible Summer by Hannah Moskowitz and I enjoyed it. This is her first middle grade novel, and I really like the size of it. It's very cute. Like, it's slightly smaller than an average hardcover. I have a copy of Blood Rose, which is by Andrea Kremer. This is the final book in the Nightshade trilogy, and Wolfsbane ended on something of a cliffhanger, so I'm really looking forward to seeing where this story goes. And I'm looking forward to just getting more of Andrea's writing because I loved Wolfsbane. Andrea had her launch party at Red Balloon Books, and I used to live near there, so I went to the launch parties for Nightshade and Wolfsbane, and I wanted to have the whole trilogy in hardcover signed, because I already had the first two. So I ordered a signed copy for Liz, Seek Your Own Path, Andrea Kramer. I'll be diving into this one very soon, because I really want to know what happens. And I am Team Shea, by the way. This next book is probably not going to come as a surprise to anyone, but I got The Fault in Our Stars, which is by John Green. I read it Looking for Alaska in August, and I fell in love with it, and it quickly became one of my favorite books, so I pre-ordered this one. And like all pre-orders, it's 
sign. So that's awesome. I wish I could meet John on the tour dinner and fighting, but you know, not this time because he's not coming near me. Another time perhaps, but I'm really excited to read this one. It's been getting a lot of rave reviews. I'm thinking this is going to have to be a reward after I finish some of my first few papers of the semester. So very excited. And I really like this finished copy. I think it's very pretty in person. The Iron Knight by Julie Kagawa. This is the fourth book in the Iron Fae series. I still have to read um, The Iron Daughter and The Iron Queen, and I'm not sure when I'll get to those, but I was talking to Julie on Twitter after the scandal of several authors bashing reviewers either on Goodreads or on their blogs, and Julie was just being very cool and level-headed, and I was like, I was thinking, Julie is someone who is dealing with all this as an observer very maturely, I think, and I was just reminded of how cool she was and how great her books were, so I thought that I should support her and get this. Next up, we have Under the Never Sky, which is by Veronica Rossi. This is another book that I don't know a ton about. I think it's supposed to be kind of a dystopian novel and I really like the cover, so I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley. So I picked this one up after reading a couple positive reviews, and it seemed like the day after I ordered it, all of these people started coming out and saying how much they liked it. For example, Maggie Stiefvater. Just generally, this book has been doing pretty well in the blogosphere, so I wanted to see what it was all about. So I'll have to read it and let you know. My children's literature book club is reading nonfiction for our next meeting, so I've got a couple books to share with you there. Phineas Gage by John Fleischman. I've already read this one and it was pretty good. It was quick, it was informative, liked it. Bootleg, Murder, Moonshine, and the Lawless Years of Prohibition, which is by Karen Blumenthal. This is actually up for the Yalsa Nonfiction Award this year, so I'm really eager to read it and learn a little bit more about bootlegging, because that's not actually something I really know anything about, and it's just kind of fun to fill those gaps in my knowledge. The last of my book club books is Amelia Lost, The Life and Disappearance of Amelia Earhart by Candace Fleming. I've heard that this one actually depicts Amelia Earhart in a, a somewhat negative manner, so I'll have to read that and see if that's actually the case. But Amelia Earhart is a historical figure who I kind of don't know too much about in detail, so I think it'll be, again, very interesting to learn more about her. Lastly, my friends and I had a mock Caldecott party where we picked what we thought would, would, might win the Caldecott this year, and there were two books that I fell in love with and I had to get them. Where's Walrus by Stephen Savage. Anyways, this is a picture book about a walrus that escapes from the zoo and the zookeepers attempts to find him. I'm just going to show you guys one of the illustrations in here that I really love. Just to give you an example. Not my favorite, but still a great one. He's in the fountain. But basically, I absolutely fell in love with this children's book. I think it's wonderful. It would work actually for really young kids because it's wordless. So. I highly recommend checking this out if you love adorable picture books. And next up, I got Grandpa Green, which is by Lane Smith. And this is very cool because a lot of the illustrations are pictures of topiaries. For example, this. This is kind of the story of um, a grandfather old pictures of topiaries, and I just think that the illustrations are beautifully done, the story is enchanting, it's a great picture book, I recommend picking it up. That is everything that I've gotten in my mailbox lately, I want to hear about what you've gotten, so please leave me a link below and I will come check it out. Until next time, happy reading! You need classics, big L grey tea, write critical essays on novels,